everybody, it's Robin, Artist Island Crafts, and this is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. How's everyone doing this week? It's been pretty good here. Nothing too exciting. Um, my youngest son, Robbie, he did turn 19 on Sunday. Kind of exciting time for him because he also bought his first car. He bought a used car about a week before his birthday, paid for it himself, which was really good. And talking to him through the years about how it's best not to buy a brand new car for your first car as a teenager, even though, I mean, he's out of high school and he's an adult, but he's still, you know, 19, still considered a teenager. That, especially in this area, there seems to be a lot of accidents. There's a lot of crazy drivers. People are racing everywhere and not paying attention and going through red lights. So it's always best to start out with a, a bit of a used car. So if while you're getting used to being a car owner, if something happens, you're not totaling a $30,000 car. Plus, bonus, no car payments, right? So he listened. You know, everything's good. He's having a good time now. He's out mobile. He hasn't had to depend on anyone, which, you know, as a kid, it's kind of hard to have your mommy drive you to work or have your siblings take you places and stuff like that. So he's happy. For anyone who's following me on YouTube, you know we've been working on crumb blocks still. This past week we have been going ahead and putting them together in different configurations, just trying to figure out what we might like. We learned pretty quick what we don't like and some of the things that we do like. I kind of like this one. Not a fan favorite. The zigzag is very, very Chevron popular. Everyone loves this. It's always a favorite. Anytime, there was always a lot of quilt alongs I saw in the past. I joined and made several of these Chevrons using half square triangles. Four patch. Not a favorite, but I think most of the problem I have is I don't like this peach polka dot and they just happen to be on the outside of the squares. And when I stitch them together, that's where they ended up. And we don't really care for it much. Put it together with some squares. And then we test it out different widths of sashing. Um, popular vote is we all like the, the narrower sashing, the one and a half inches versus the two and a half inches before you stitch it in. But I think my favorite is still, I'm really surprised. I like just sticking them all together and seeing how they look out like this. I've decided I have a large window behind you guys. It's, it's probably a good half of my wall. I think it's like 56 inches or 63 inches wide. I'm gonna make a curtain. I'm just gonna stitch all these together and I'm just going to put a piece of fabric on the back with no batting and I'm gonna let the sun shine through the window. Now that's gonna be fine for during the winter and stuff, but I will have to put a heat blocking curtain behind it during the summer because it gets awfully hot in here in the Florida sun. So once again, I've been having a week where I haven't, other than this type of sewing, I haven't really been wanting to do any sewing. I've been wanting to do a lot of hand stitching. And part of that hand stitching I pulled out, I wanted to finish off of the three Halloween blocks that I've been working on on the gray fabric so that I can start on the purple. I basically just, I. A lot of these just had a little bit left. I had about a third of it on the bottom to do, and most of them just have the signs that need to be done because I was going to do them in glow in the dark thread that I just never purchased. So I'm down on my last sign on the first block, so it's getting close. I spent a lot of time just sitting down, relaxing, and working with this. This was very enjoyable. I did do a little knitting. I've got two more dishcloths done. And I decided, even though I have the lacy shawl that I've been working on, that one takes a little bit more concentration than I have right now. So I decided I'm just gonna cast on another shawl. This one is called Stormy Sky Shawl. And it is by, very well prepared today. This is by Life is Cozy, and I'll put a link down below to the Ravelry uh, pattern page. But it's, it's still a lace shawl, but this time the lace is only on one side. It's just basic, simple yarn overs and knit two together. 
and it's forming even though I'm using a worsted weight yarn instead of the the sock weight yarn that it calls for it's got a nice stretch to it so this is going to make a nice uh, shawl what it's doing is you start in the beginning at this little tiny point and you just keep knitting and knitting until it gets a nice wide one so I guess it's like a it's going to be like a diamond I found I had this this gray and white this light gray and white um, yarn that's what it's called yarn and I thought that would work good with the stormy skies plus I've had this in my stash for a while and I just need to get rid of it I need to use it up they say it's going to need more yardage than what I have here so I also have a darker gray that I thought as stormy as stormy skies and it goes with the gray so if it gradually gets darker towards the end then that'll be okay but I like the light gray and the white the best so I wanted to make sure I used all of that first before I added this one in but this is a great before bed shawl just put a couple of rows onto it and it's growing pretty quick so my rule of only having one shawl on the needles at a time is out the window so much for rules it's not like we really follow them anyway right so that's about it on the main things I've been working on like I said it's been for me it's just been a sit down and relax slow kind of week I didn't want to really do too much just not feeling it right now but one of the things that I am joining up for this year uh, last year I saw the there was this um, take a stitch Tuesday it's where every Tuesday this one blog would teach you a new stitch it's the Zentangle Zentangle blog once again I'll put a link down below on YouTube for you and she would teach you a new stitch every Tuesday and then you would go ahead and put it into a project or into a practice piece and at the end of the year you'll have learned 52 new stitches and you'll have some type of a freeform art project some people are actually making pictures and stuff but I thought for my first time doing it this year she's actually been doing it since 2007 that's 11 years that's a lot of stitches but I thought I would just start with I have this uh, I had this oval embroidery hoop I really really liked it and I've just never used it for anything so I took some of my not so favorite fabric it's um I'm sure it has a, a name to it I think like toil or something toile but it, it, it's a white fabric with a blueprint on it it's got houses and trees and stuff I just went ahead and put two pieces back to back and popped it in my hoop and I'm just gonna randomly put my stitches all over this and practice it but what I did do is I have an outline of the word believe I've always liked the way this was written I, I printed it off a line somewhere from a free handwriting thing so I thought I would do some special stitches in Believe and then just add all the stitches around it. And the fact that this is on a blue fabric that I'm not really a fan of won't matter because when it's done, this entire thing will be covered with stitches. I'll probably add some beads to it too just because I like to do bead work. But while looking for this again this year, I am a little behind. It started in January, I think. So I just have to catch up. It's not going to be that big of a deal. It's only one stitch a week. And I'll be caught up in no time if I do two or three at a time. But then I also found a button a day because I thought it was stitch a day when I looked it up. So I found it and it's like I said, it's uh, take a stitch Tuesday. But they also had one where this one lady was just adding a button a day and some embroidery stitches to a hoop. So I got my large round quilting hoop out and this one I wrote love on in my handwriting. So. I don't know I just I felt like it would be nice to have a word in the center and then work around it and on this one you just add a button a day and then some embroidery stitches to fill in so at the end of it you know you have 365 buttons on this round circle and you have a really fun art piece to put in your craft room there's no it was just a blog post I'll put the link down below for that also but it's basically just a this is what I did last year this is how you can do it there's no guidelines she doesn't show you what stitches she uses or anything but I thought I could always take stitches from here and add it to here if I want I know a lot of embroidery stitches so even just putting buttons on and and having some fun on this will be great because once again I can use up my button stash I have a lot of embroidery embroidery thread and a lot of beads I've always liked working with embroidery stitches and beadwork and stuff like that so I think this is going to be really fun Plus, I have a lot of these really huge buttons that I have no use for. They came in a multi-pack of crafting buttons, 
So I figured I'll just scatter some big ones around. I'd already put this black one on, but I think I might want to section this off and maybe have different colors. I don't want it to read as a rainbow, but I don't know, even if I have to take this one off, maybe I'll designate it like a color wheel. That would be fun because I need to learn my color wheel a little bit better anyways, and this would be a good way to practice it. These aren't new, but I haven't worked on any of my stars this week, but I did want to say thank you to everyone for all the helpful hints and opinions and thoughts about how I can take care of my stars so they won't fall apart. Going into this, I kind of knew I was going to have to add some uh, support stitches into it and restitch some of them. Of course I was trying to avoid that, but I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to do a lot of quilting in the stars. That wasn't my plan. I wanted to do more of my quilting in the black so the stars popped out more. So I think it's, I'm going to have to follow everyone's advice that said to go ahead and add some more stitches to them because I really don't want it to come out of the wash and have to try to fix it later after it's already turned into a quilt. I've already put a lot of time into this and I have no deadline for this, so it's not gonna be that big of a deal to add some more stitches to it. It just gets me, I get to play with the fabric for a little bit longer then, right? So that's it for me this week. Uh, my plans for next week, I'm gonna be working on these. Uh, you. I don't know how much you're going to notice progress on them. I mean, they're empty now, so you'll see something. I'm not sure how much I'll get actually put into them. But like this one for the Take a Stitch Tuesday, it's it starts out simple with like a running stitch and a buttonhole and stuff like that. So it's more going to be the process of where do I want to put it on the hoop. And for me, it should be pretty simple. I'll just throw it on there. I don't, I'm not looking for a design, so that should be simple. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to be adding some buttons and I'm going to be working on my Halloween embroidery so I can get that turned into a wall hanging so I can start on the purple version. All right, I hope everyone's been having a great week. I hope you're getting some crafty things done and that your weather has been improving now that hopefully you're officially into spring and the snow is melting and the sun is getting warmer. I'm gonna go check out everyone else's videos and I will see you next week, bye.